to speak. Um, very special for me to come here and present to you guys. It really feels like not that long ago that I was in your chair wrestling with my college decision and what I'm going to do. Uh, then I'm going to hopefully talk about my, my path, how I chose my college, what led me to get on the tour, and then give you that same game plan to be that successful in whatever it is you guys choose to do. I started taking tennis reasonably serious around age 16. By reasonably serious, I mean moving from two days a week to about four or five days a week of practice. Uh, I decided that I wanted college tennis to be a big part of my life. Uh, growing up in Minnesota, I started researching a lot of the colleges in the Midwest. Uh, that was 1998, 99 when I started that process, which was when the internet was first getting started. So the best way was to figure out who these coaches were and, and, and write them, write them handwritten notes. Uh, I wrote to a lot of the Division Three, a couple of Division Two, and a lot of the Division One schools, hopefully to try to draw their interest in me. I was a, a junior player with really no national ranking, uh, limited experience, but good potential, I thought. So I was hoping to get someone who's really you know, fight on my game, but, but it was tough. Uh, two things I was looking for most was I wanted to find a coach who I thought could develop my game. Uh, my father runs a tennis club, so I had been around and exposed to a good coach growing up, and I wanted someone who could take me to the next level. Uh, he played for a coach who was a real good mentor for him, and I wanted that experience. I was also looking for a program that would have um, friends that I would think would be friends for the rest of my life. Um, so when I looked at the team, I looked at, well, who were these kind of guys? Could I get along with these people? Um, I started looking for teams with primarily American players, which is ironic now because like half of my best friends live outside the country, but you, know, you don't always know what you're looking for. Um, but that, 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 that was happened to be one of my things. Um, so when you guys now start, con start con contacting these coaches directly. Uh, as I talked to Ramsey Smith, he's a friend of mine at Duke, he says, Whenever someone writes him a note directly from the recruit, he almost always responds. Even if the, if the player has no chance to play for him at Duke, obviously one of the top programs in the country, so many players, you know, unfortunately won't fit into his team. But he'll almost always write back. He said if it's a mass written email, a note from the parents, it usually goes into a different file. So you guys are 16, 17 years old, you guys are coming into being adults. Start taking charge. This is, this is your guy's chance to pick your school. So reach out to these people directly. There's going to be some rejection. There's going to be some notes to be said that don't get answered. I wrote a lot of letters that didn't get, that didn't get responded to. I was practicing um, maybe five years ago with Andy Murray uh, at the National Training Center in, in London. And there was a bunch of coaches there because they were serving some of the British players. And they were looking down on their board. And we saw we stopped kidding. And they said, Eric, Eric. Where did you go to college again? I said, I went to the same Adolphus College and I said, yeah, why do you go there? This is a coach from Tennessee and Notre Dame. And I said, why do you go to that school? I said, I wrote all of you guys a letter. Every one of you guys. <laughs> they said, what, really? You sure? You sure? I don't ever get that one. I said, yeah, I wrote every one of you guys a letter. So it happens. But without, without trying, you know, you, you're never going to have any success. You've you, you got to go for it. Um, as I narrowed down my search, I decided that I really wanted to try Division I tennis. I chose a school called Ball State University. It's in Muncie, Indiana, a mid-ranked Division I school. I started off as number probably with 10 on the team. I was a walk-on, and slowly through the fall season, worked myself into the lineup. I played four, five, six, even seven, eight, kind of throughout the year. I was in and out of the lineup. There was a lot of good players, you know, fighting for a spot on the squad. Uh, it wasn't the ideal situation for me. I thought I wanted to go to a place where I wanted to work myself onto the team. I found out that I really didn't like that role. I hated being the number six guy and looking at the number seven guy and thinking, God, I'd really love to lose this today because otherwise I'm out of the team. Like, and that, that, was, that, wasn't, that wasn't the best environment for me. Um, I, I spoke with, with, with Brian Boland, the coach of Virginia, and I said, you know, what, was, what was some advice you give? He said, he sees it as three roles on every team. You have your impact player for a Division One team. That would be someone who's going to offer a scholarship to. Someone who's going to come in and play one, two, three, or four at a team. He has role players, which is like what I was at at Ball State, where you're going to play a lot of matches. You might be in another lineup. You got to fight. You might develop, but you're 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 in there. And then there's just your prestige players, players who come to him and say, "I want to play at the University of Virginia. I know that I may never play a match with counts, but I'm going to work hard. I'm going to be part of the team." And, 
You know, Virginia tennis is something in my blood, and I, I, I want to be a part of it. And if you can figure out that role now, which role do you want? That's going to help them fit even better. A lot of players sometimes shoot a little bit too high, and you want to have high aspirations, but knowing which role you're looking for will really help your college search. Um, he also talked about how important it is for you to be honest with your level of play. We, we, as, as I'm a volunteer as a coach at Harvard now, and we love getting matches from you guys. Send us matches, send us a clip of you competing. But send us a clip of a match that you can play 80% of the time. Don't send us the greatest match that you've ever played. Because that's, if that's all we've seen of you, we're going to expect when you walk on campus, you're going to bring that level every single day. So you don't want to set an unrealistic, unrealistic expectation that you can't hold yourself to. So send us, you know, send a good match. And send something, send a performance that you can walk out on the court and regularly do. Uh, also, don't send us a match that you win 6-1, 6-1. We don't really want to see that. We want to see you compete. Even if that's one step, win, lose, make it a close match against a player who's about your level. That's what, that's what we really want to see as a coach. Um, after a year and a half playing at Ball State University, I decided, you know what, this isn't the right fit for me. I've been in and out of the lineup, worrying about not playing, being a walk-on, so this isn't, this isn't my ideal situation. Um, I also decided that, you know what, I'm never going to be a pro tennis player, so why am I spending four hours a day on the court? I'm going to go to a Division three school, going to get a great education, and still have tennis be involved in my life, but I could have a much better balance. So I transferred to Gustavus Adolphus College, actually the same school that my dad played at. So I, I knew the coach and said, this is going to be the right fit for me. Instantly, I walked in and played number one or two in the lineup right away and thrived in a role where I was the top player on the team. I got to play all the best players from all of, uh, all of our competition. I got really good attention from the coach, extra work, really started to take some pride in my own tennis. Uh, a lot of people have always tell me they, I'm afraid to go to this school because I'm going to be the best player. Who am I going to practice with? How am I going to get better? You know, with the right coach and the right team, even if you're the top player, you can still get better. You can always be improving, even if you're hitting with inferior competition. Otherwise, I mean, how would Rodgers be better? He might be better. So, that, 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 that was really, that was really the, role, the role for me. When I got to the team there, my sophomore year, I was motivated, I was hungry, I wanted to prove to this new team that I was really something special. Um, I went all the way to the NCAA final, I ended up losing there. Won all my matches in the team tournament, we finished third. It was a really successful season. My junior year, we took this trip to the Australian Open. We did a J-term class, it's a one month class in January, where 60 kids went to Australia for a month and went to the Australian Open. And I remember sitting watching the Bryan brothers, and there were two girls in the class who said, Eric, you're, you're the top player on our team. That could be you someday. <laughs> and Flight said, no, nah, it doesn't really work like that. You don't, you, you don't play Division Three and then play in the Australian Open and just, you know, no one does it. It's just not. They, they go to the academy kids and just, it's a long story, but it doesn't happen. He said, no, you're the, you're the number one in the country. Maybe, maybe you could do it. I said, no, nah. it doesn't, doesn't happen. Um, that spring, I started really taking my tennis for granted. I put things on cruise control. I tried to join a fraternity, started partying too much. It happens. We had, we had a really great team that senior year. We had, or that, that, sorry, that year. We had five seniors who had really improved all their games. I was the number one player. We were the number one team in the country. We got to the semifinals playing against Emory, who was like the number three team. All came down to my match, three all, tiebreaker in the third, playing against a freshman who had beat easily in the fall on the ride. I lose the match. Cost our team the national championship. Five seniors graduated with other title. Crushed me. By far the biggest loss in my career because I lost out for myself but for my teammates. I let them down. I decided that senior year, there is no way I'm going to go through that pain again. I sat out my coach and I said, I know I can't give those seniors through your back but I'm never letting my team down again. I'm doing everything I can. I'm gonna work from the first ball to the last ball of every practice. Extra workouts, you tell me what I need to do, I'm gonna do it. When I got to the NCAA tournament that year, I was down a set and a break in the quarterfinal. And I thought, you know what, I've done everything I can do. I'm gonna just play loose, play free. I came back and won. Got to the, the semi 